I'm in Lubbock, Texas to learn about the two-year drought that has crippled the region. It's a deeply Christian community, one that Catherine Hayhoe and her husband Drew Farley, an evangelical pastor, call home. You know, we, we pray for rain and we hope for rain because the reality is nothing grows without rain. I've met more than a few people who don't believe climate change is what's causing the drought. I think it's a cycle. Uh, everything runs in 20-year cycles. It's in the scriptures that we would go through years of drought. There's only one man that knows how much rain we're going to get, and that's God, and he's not a scientist, so I'm not putting much faith in what they say. <laughs> I'm meeting with Catherine because she's a world-renowned climate scientist. She also happens to be an evangelical Christian. She's made it her mission to preach the climate gospel to her friends, neighbors, and anyone who may not yet be convinced that climate change is real and caused by humans. We see that in every season in Texas, it's been warming since the 1950s. So yes, our climate is changing. Our winter is changing quicker than our summer, but it is changing. For many people, uh, they view science and faith as being deeply divided. How many of you have somebody, a good friend or somebody in your family, who thinks basically everything I said today is a bunch of crap? <laughs> I do. <laughs> yes. Like there's a huge chasm in between science and faith and you can't really be an adherent of one and the other one at the same time. I grew up with the understanding that there was no conflict. I'm here to learn how Catherine navigates the often contentious intersection of science and faith. Hey. Hey. How you doing? Good. It's Don. Nice to meet you, nice Catherine. Nice to meet you, too. Most people are pretty polite to my face, but I get a fair amount of hate mail, some of it written by hand, a lot of it just email. Hate mail about what specifically? Um, about the fact that I'm talking about climate change. The, that's um, false, that's... Um, yeah. Yes, that how dare I stand up in public and tell people that climate change is real, that it's happening because of human activities, that the impacts are serious and that we need to do something about it. That is capable of provoking such a, a wave of rage and hatred. Um, you know, everything from you're an idiot um, to get back to the kitchen where women belong. Well, I mean, come on, that's <laughs> just practical. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. very standard. Yeah. Um, to, I want to see your, your head rolling off a guillotine and your child watching it. That's extreme. Yeah, so every, you know, everything in between that. But the Christian ones, I mean, I've gotten some doozies about how, you know. Your turncoat. Yeah, exactly. Because if you're a Christian, you can't think this is real. But I'm not meeting with Catherine to gang up on people who disagree with us. I'm here to learn how she reaches out across the divide. So today, she and her husband, Drew, are introducing me to their friend, Curtis. He's a cotton farmer and a Christian, and he isn't convinced climate change is necessarily caused by human activity. We've been talking about the drought here and, and how it's really uh, been affecting people in West Texas. I just want to know what you've, what you've seen, what you've experienced, and what you attribute it to. Honestly, in my opinion, it's just a cycle. What is the cycle? that you're seeing. As unusual as the drought has been in the last three years, just prior to that, we had a, a, a segment of time that was unusually wet. I'm not the authority to say that global warming is a problem or it's not. My concern is that we are taking this information and we are forcing legislation upon people based on theoretical presumptions. Well, here, here's the thing that I would just say, though. There's been a concerted effort to make people believe that there's a huge debate in the science. And that it's 50-50. Exactly. I think that the average Joe, with, sitting in your situation, has been given the impression that there's one Catherine with her expertise that says it's happening, mm -hmm. and another Catherine with uh, the same her, expertise. The same That's expertise. Right. Yeah. It's not saying that it's not. That's so if 97% yeah. of scientists are saying it's happening, then that needs to be conveyed to the public in a clearer way and not from someone with a political agenda. I'll stand, based on 97%, then I have no problem saying, okay, this, this is happening to one degree or another. We need more messengers like Catherine who say, well, I'll do that work and then let me just share it with you. And you can trust me and I don't have an agenda and I'm, I don't live in a palace and 
I'm not trying to get any money out of your pocket. I'm just trying to let you know what's up. 